They can wander on in. Perfect. All right, this is great because we're going to get a lot of really awesome hands on experience. Um, so there's only four of us, five of us, but just as like a get to know you activity, I wanted us to say our name again yes. and um, what is the best thing you ate recently? So you can have a second to think about it. That's easy. Because we're all, we're working with food today. So my name is Stasha, and last weekend we found a bunch of morels and made a morel pizza, and it was just out, out of control. Whoa. Both All right, you win. <laughs> well, not trying to one up you right away, but we can go. Let's go this way. Okay. Um, just saying names and. What's the best thing you ate lately? Oh, what's the best thing I ate lately? Which is hard. I'm sorry. Maybe we can go this way if it's. Um, my name's Rebecca, and the best thing I ate lately was spaghetti. Mm. Anything special about it? No, I just had a craving for it. The mm. sauce was really good. So just satisfied it? Yeah. yeah nice. <laughs> uh, my name's Casey. The best thing I had was brownie pudding <gasps> that I made for my husband's birthday. I've never heard of such a thing. Oh, it was pretty excellent. Oh my god. Yeah. Is it like pudding with brownie chunks or like a loose brownie or you gotta elaborate? Uh, so it's like a, it's like brownie batter and then you pour like, you put like cocoa powder and brown sugar on top and then you pour hot water all over all of it. Oh. And so it ends up, you get like a brownie layer and then like a pudding layer on the bottom. Oh my god. And then we put ice cream on it. It's really oh. I ate some, it was pretty magical. <laughs> Lucky man. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So I'm Sean, and uh, today the bridge had slices of uh, their their white pizza for the day it was Brussels sprouts and sliced lemon. Ooh, is that awesome? Nice. I'm Lottie, short for Charlotte, huh? and um, this Lottie's a little happier to me. And my great joy was I picked my first fresh spinach. Ooh. And made an omelet. <laughs> it was delicious. Yeah, nothing better than right out of the garden. So Which I can get my husband to eat a green anything. To <laughs> cook it or just fresh? Well, just the fact that it's fresh. Mm -hmm. So that is a beautiful segue. Thank you, Lottie. Because we all know we're here because we know that the food you grow yourself, like there's nothing more delicious or fresher or more nutritious. So we're going to learn or we're going to work on getting better at that today. Um, so can you, Sean, you told me a little bit, just like what's your gardening experience and kind of what, where are you at in terms of knowledge and just all that kind of good stuff? Um, well, so uh, my mom has been a lifelong gardener and uh, when I lived with her when I was younger, I helped her out a lot. Uh, and so, and then my dad too, some, some gardening. Um, so basically everything I know at this point I, I picked up just from, from helping out, but that's that's not a whole lot. Uh, I, this is the third year that uh, I've had my own garden. Mm -hmm. uh, and the past couple of years have been terribly successful. I've, I've been able to get some stuff out of it. And, you know, enough to keep me going, but... <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I, I haven't really uh, gotten the system down, I guess. Okay. Yeah, as we go, I'd love for you to, like, talk about if we're working with a plant that you've either had success fit with or haven't. Like, we can definitely talk about it, try and figure out what's going on. Lottie? Uh, can I add something? Of course. Since I'm also part of the seed library, mm -hmm. and one of my friends is owns Redwood uh, Heirloom Seeds, and so I was down what used to be my home in Shasta County, 
and uh, I brought back a whole bag of very unique, interesting heirlooms. About half of them we got in the library, so they're probably gone. However, <laughs> tonight and tomorrow morning I'll be working on getting a bunch more envelopes, so just know that if you get down to the library, it's good stuff. No later than two tomorrow. <laughs> or shortly thereafter. I have a lot of really good stuff. But, as I said, I'm from Northern California, so my gardening experience here is... So different. I got my spinach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, but I inherited four beds and I pre-treated them, mm -hmm. you know, over winter. So, but they're little, you know, they're not enough to fan with. Sure. So. Well, it's fabulous. You have a I whole new set of issues and pests and Montana yes, stuff certain. to learn about. <laughs> um, yeah, so when I'm going to start a space that's just for me, like the first thing I like to think of when I want to plant a garden is what am I actually going to eat? And since both of you guys have gardened before, this probably isn't a problem you've run into, but I've met a bunch of new gardeners who like hear that kohlrabi is really easy to grow, so they'll plant a bunch of kohlrabi, but they don't know what it is, and they don't know how to cook with it, and then it ends up going to waste. So I think like what I'm actually going to eat is the most important thing to think of first. Then how much space do you have and how much time do you have to dedicate to it? Because some plants are much fussier than others. Um, so you really want to grow your own. Lottie has a beautiful heirloom winter squash that she wants to grow, but she only has a tiny little raised bed. You just need to remember that that's something you could just have, you'll probably just have one squash plant in that little raised bed because they get really big and they take the whole season. So just think about, do I want to dedicate a little bit or like this chunk of the small space that I have to the squash? And if you do like more power to you, go for it. But it's just like something, something else to weigh. Um, yeah, so just there are a lot of things to decide before. That's like where you should be at, say like November through January like plotting for next year, like what do I want? And then one of the best ways I like to start gardening is to try and write everything down that I'm going to do beforehand and make myself a schedule so that when like stuff's hitting the fan and I have a million tasks to do in the garden, I can just look at my list or my calendar that I made and I know what I need to plant, when it needs to be transplanted and when I should be harvesting just so that I've done all my thinking when I have time to think. And then when everything's happening, you can just look at what you should be doing next. Um, so think ahead, plan it out carefully. Do you have such a flow chart? Um, I have, I could make a mock-up if you want. I have something called a greenhouse book, because I have a long, like we have a lot of things. I, so I work at the university dining garden, and we have like a half acre. And so that's a lot of space to plan for, and we have a bunch of stuff we start in the greenhouse. So in the fall and winter, I make a crop map, something like this, that Mud has. And we can look at this together. So I make a map of what I'm going to do where. And then in my little greenhouse book, I write down, okay, like the week of April 11th, I'm going to plant three trays of squash that will be transplanted on this day more or less and like you have I usually give myself a week window to do tasks because you know you can plan like oh on Tuesday April 22nd I'm gonna do exactly this thing and it usually doesn't work out that way um, the thing is, I don't know when to start because it's like I started to make starts and normally they'd be up but they'd, they're over two months old and they're just now getting ready to right you're in a whole you new know. environment yeah so it's I trying to figure out when to do what mm -hmm. that, that's what I don't know. That's perfect. Good. We'll explore that today. I like that word. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, so making a map like this is really useful and keeping them throughout the years because crop rotation is another thing that's important. Do you guys, is that a familiar expression? Can either of you tell me what it means and why we do it? Different plants have different nutrients. Exactly. reasons we rotate crops there's another big reason pests, pests yes. yeah um, a lot of say like tomatoes they tomatoes peppers and eggplants are all in the nightshade 
and potatoes, all in the nightshade family, and they all have similar funguses, similar blights, similar like worms that like to eat them, and all of the spores and the eggs can lie dormant in the soil. So yeah, it's another really great reason. But if you have your crop plan, you'd be like, oh, three years ago I planted tomatoes over here. So now I can probably put them there again because I've been rotating through all sorts of different things. I've been good with my compost um, and that is really helpful. So keeping records and planning ahead is, will save you a lot of headaches. And as you're getting used to a new environment, especially yes. if you what write down, <laughs> exactly, you could be like, oh man, I planted my tomatoes way too early last year. And I know it because I wrote it down in my book and then Next year, I'll wait like two weeks or so. I planted my tomatoes too early this year because I got really excited and like I was kind of <laughs> depressed in March. <laughs> I was like, I gotta plant them in the greenhouse. Um, and thankfully, we lucked out that it, it hasn't frosted for a while. And I, back on wood, I don't think it's gonna frost again. Um, but it's been an early spring for us. I, yeah. I put in like three charred plants that I didn't grow, I bought them. Mm -hmm. And it was still too cold. Damaged. Mm. They'll come out of it, I'm quite certain, but mm -hmm. that surprised the heck out of me because. Well, tomorrow's the average last frost day. I thought it was today, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> they were still unhappy. Yeah. Yeah. It was still cool enough, even though I even put some ringy cloth on them. And oh, okay, that's what I got. was going to ask if you remade them. Yeah, I did. Hmm. So, learn, you know, in my notebooks. Yep. That no matter if they're cold crops, I gotta, I gotta slow them down a bit. And did you harden them off first? I bought them in March. Like I okay. said, I bought them oh. three. So do you think they've been hardening them off outside? I don't know. And this interesting is one volunteer in, uh, you know, we just moved here so we can hear this little bit. One chart plot, and it did not get hurt. Hmm. But the ones from Marches did. So that's why I prefer to start on my plants, but I don't have a greenhouse. So right. Yeah, it's all about what kind of gear and space yeah. you have. Um, okay. Yeah, transplanting can be, we're going to do some transplanting today, it'll be great. Um, this is an okay time to transplant, it would be ideal if it were a cloudy day, because um, that helps diminish transplant shock, but there's all sorts of, you know, things that can happen, because it's a pretty stressful time for a plant to be transplanted, um, just because like they have their little happy home and then you're introducing them to a whole new environment, they're like, ah, crap. Um, so there's transplant shock, there, it could be too cold, it could be too sunny. We can have both on the same day in Montana, because that's how we are. Um, so yeah, I would say, you, it sounds like you did the right thing by covering it with Rime. Mm -hmm. um, hardening off is really important. Is that a term you're familiar with? Yeah. It's, I've, I've heard it, but I really have a good sense of how to do it. Yeah, it's, it can be, it varies for plants, but it's essentially putting them outside for intervals before you put them right in the ground so they're not like happy and like sheltered in a greenhouse and then all of a sudden they're out living outside. It gets them used to the sun, it gets them used to the wind and to temperature fluctuation. So you start with like a couple hours one day and then extend it and then extend it and then eventually the best thing to do is leave them out overnight before you plant them. Um, but it just depends like how cool it's going to be and stuff. But that's essentially it. And that just helps them, it helps reduce transplant shock because they don't like it. Um, do we want to do some transplants to practice? Sure, sure. Let's do it. And then we can come back and talk about other stuff if we want to. But please ask questions because it's only, it's only two of you guys. So like, it can be a very tailored experience. And this is probably a little bit off, but I was hoping to ask a little bit about uh, cold snap so that's like really individual to the kind of plant it usually just says on the packet like sometimes they can be in the fridge sometimes they want to go in the freezer you can really yeah like all the things i have just said you know, cold stratified. So. Oh, that's not very helpful. No, it's not. Um, what do you have? So, I have... Let's do some tomatoes. Uh, oh, is there... Yeah, are we doing some straights for that, do you think? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or, oh, right, we want to do the pots. We forgot which ones are Ellie's. Yeah. 
Yeah. We need trowels anyway. Yeah, we can do that. And then Jeez. so we have those, and then there's a pile of topsoil, and then we can bring some water over and like, we're gonna mix. Awesome. Because it's just that over there is just like untreated right now. So, right. Um, so we can bring some other stuff over and we can also mix things. Yay! Is there any um, other hand tools that are helpful around? Not right now. Some trowels. Yeah. Maybe. I think we have talked about preparing the beds, which is what I thought this class was. Yeah. Okay, good. You got it. And did I bring my stuff? No. That's okay. It's why we have a bucket of gloves. Yeah, that's good. Let's see if that's good. And I do mean I have funny hands. Oh, I have. This is a genetic thing from, coming from Viking stock. Oh. Well, that's pretty cool, though. Yeah. Just check it. Okay, let's go. I'll follow. Okay, let's come. Should I grab a tree? Uh, we're just gonna start with tomatoes and pots, I think. They are, oh, yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Um, Sean, if you wanna actually grab the pot box, that would be awesome. So I have, I have a couple different kinds of alliums. Uh-huh. Uh, I also have some sort of herbs Yeah, for those individual varieties, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Um, but if you Google, I'm sure if you Google Shiso cold stratification, it'll tell you how cold and for how long. But yeah, it really helps them break dormancy. In the do you leave your drip or do you pull it up for the winter time? I usually do. Uh, pull it up or leave? Pull it up. Um, just because it gets, like, we get a lot of freeze and thaw, and, and that can damage it. Right. Uh, you could leave it if you're feeling lazy, probably, and your shirt is fully drained, but I would recommend pulling it up. Okay. Um, and so we have some beautiful lasagna-style, thank you, raised beds here. Okay. Um, and so raised beds and planting direct in the ground have pros and cons. Uh, one of the really important things in Montana for a raised bed is that having it up out of the ground um, helps the soil warm up much faster, which lets us plant a lot sooner, so that's pretty pivotal. Um, and it also helps with drainage, because here we get a ton of rain in the spring and then nothing. So it really helps stuff keep from being too waterlogged in the springtime. Um, disadvantages are it's a permanent structure, so it's a little harder to like move your soil around. Um, if you have a lot of raised beds, you can't really use much mechanized equipment on it if you're going to go that route. Um, but overall, for a home gardener in Montana, it's a pretty good idea. And then here, we can explore the, see if we can get into the lasagna a little bit. Are you guys familiar with lasagna gardening? Mm -hmm. Ellie was talking about it a little bit. Oh, last, last time? Workshop. Oh, okay, great. So maybe but you I guys... See you can you tell me what state it was in last workshop? See if it's different? I don't know. Was it all filled up? What? The lasagna bed? Yeah. She had, it already had the oh, straw. Straw and burlap and everything. Oh, I didn't great. I know about putting the burlap down. Yeah. So that's, um, it's just like another mulch level or layer. Okay. And it'll really help us retain moisture and keep the soil a that's constant good. temperature. And then how do you cut? You just cut where you want to plant? Yeah, we're just going to plant right into it. Okay. Which is pretty fun. Um, but yeah, this is the great. What do you use for your lasagna? We heard that word, but we didn't get specifics. Oh, sure. Um, you know, I actually didn't make this, but generally it's layers of, it's brown and green layers. Um, so carbon and nitrogen. Uh, for your carbon, you can use, you can use cardboard, it's really popular. You can use dead, dried up leaves. Um, and then the green is really just whatever kitchen scraps you have. It can be grass clippings. It's kind of, it can be like what you have on hand and what's the most convenient for you. You don't have enough of the kitchen scraps. But mm. I was, do you know about the keyhole gardens? Mm -mm. Okay. Well, they, they have like a wire thing in the center and you throw all your kitchen stuff there and then it's a circular bed around it. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about venturing forth and putting something like that even in my living room. Oh, I've never heard of such a thing. Well, go, just look up keyhole gardens. Oh, it's awesome. really fascinating. Mm. Yeah, there's all, all kinds of ways to do it. Um, so, some of these tomatoes, we're going to put them in pots to start. 
Um, and then we're gonna plant some other guys directly into the bed. But have you guys transplanted tomatoes before? Sort of. Yes, sort of. I don't have my handy dandy tool, but. Um, yeah, and so I'm mixing some potting soil for this. Um, so we just had topsoil that was over there that I don't know where it came from. We got it from somebody. We had pulled in some llama manure that was over here. This is peat. And then I'm going to put in a little bit of the vermiculite. Oh, so it's peat. Okay. Yep, yep, this one's peat. And this is for starting seeds or for transplanting? Transplanting. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. It's a lot of times, like, if you, you can just get pre-mixed potting soil. Yeah. But that's not what we had, so. It's, it's fun to do it yourself. Help. Yeah. <laughs> and it's usually cheaper to oh, get your yeah. own components if you can. Um, do you know what tomatoes like? I'm just going to make it up as I Yeah, you can just make. Put some in there? Yeah, go for it. Um, do you want to talk about the different parts? Um, you can. Okay. I'm working. That's true. That's true. So. Want me to steal? That would be great. Yeah, let's go for it. So llama poo, a great source of nitrogen. The peat is going to be really helpful for retaining water. Um, and vermiculite is mostly for volume because it's really oh, it bare. Mm -hmm. creating space. Mm -hmm. um, I think underneath the also would add a little bit of CZ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, girl, get yeah. it. Beautiful. Just an aside, from my birthday was in February, and then the card, my brother says, now I just love giving you shit, so in May I'll bring you. So, <laughs> so nice. I just got my llama shit. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Now your hands are in it, it's great. If you guys are looking for more, ours just went half price. <gasps> so, yeah. uh -huh. I might have to come in some. Oh, yeah. we have a bunch back there, yeah. Okay. You should buy it by the truckload. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you know what? We're actually, I'm picking the nice tomatoes. Let's transplant some sad tomatoes and make them, give them a better life. What do you say? Um, <laughs> so fancy here. <laughs> Mine are nice. Nice. <laughs> I know, I know that one because it was so nice. <laughs> so because you guys have gardened before, I'm sure you know what aphids look like. But there they are, little aphids. Oh yes, nasty little seeds. They are, but they're amazing creatures. They reproduce like crazy. They can, I've tried to drown them before after picking kale and it took like three days for them to drown Jeez. in a bucket of water. So they're really very, they deserve some respect at least because of their resiliency and how annoying they are for us. They do. Um, so does any, can anybody suggest some treatment options for these poor tomatoes? Just wash them off? No, no, yes, but I mean, I soak the whole thing in water so that the milk gets the milk. Oh, yeah, so try and deal with the, the wilty problem first. That's fair. I've just been reading about colloidal silver at any kind of, they did all these different concentrations, and the aphids take it in and go, mm, the fungi, the bacteria, all of it. So a tomato not being stressed suddenly goes yes oh, and starts putting out this much stronger. I just this was just last night. Huh? Part of you know, about the home network, the home garden network. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I always get funny interesting things. That was last night. It was all about colloidal silver. Yeah, that's new to me. So I'm gonna make a big solution and we just spray it because Hey, what can you lose? Yeah. yeah. Do you know if it's like organically certified, like OMRI listed? Um, mm, mm. The kind that I get is. Nice. But I don't remember in the article if they said that. So. Mm. But that makes sense because there's lots of metals that are useful um, yeah. in gardening. Copper is really That's great. Right. It's a great fungicide. Uh, also toxic to fish, so you want to be careful where yeah. you're spraying it. Um, but it's organically approved. But these guys, we can start trying to make them happier. Yeah, these are pretty dry. Um, and they're also a little root bound, which is when, it just means the roots have grown 
uh, to fill their container. Um, so what we're going to do, we're trying to separate them gently. Yeah, someone, everyone can grab some if you want. <laughs> some gingerly separating tomatoes. Um, Sean, you want to separate some tomatoes? Um, and once these guys get nice and watered in their home, I'd probably try and just brush the aphids off with my hands and then I'd treat them with some neem oil. Um, it's called neem. It's a okay. plant extract. And you, you can get it at any garden store. You mix it with water and soap. Um, and you just spray it on and it's great for aphids. It um, interrupts their life cycle and su suffocates them. Which sounds really brutal, but they're jerks. You could also just go for Brady bugs, but that's a little bit more complex. To no, it's, it's a great natural solution, um, especially in a greenhouse. If you're going to shut the door and like release a bunch of ladybugs, totally great. Um, so one of the things when you're transplanting tomatoes is a tomato, it's a vining plant and so it can grow roots along its whole stem. And you don't want to do this with most plants, but I'm going to pick off the leaves to just about, I'm just going to leave the top ones. And I'm going to try and get these little stumps because if I leave a big stump they're just going to rot and it's not going to be pretty. But I'm going to prune it down to just the top because this will produce roots all along it. And I'm going to bury it so everyone can see. Bury it pretty much as far as I can. Give it a little top off. Beautiful. And then this tomato, it's going to be a little cranky about it at first because it's like, ah, you took all my leaves away and buried me. Oh. Um, but that whole stem is going to develop a root structure and it's going to be a much stronger plant than it would be if we just buried it, say, if we just um, put it in the soil like up to here. It's going to give it a really nice head start. So do we want to do a couple and then water them in? Come on in. Like peppers? Mm -hmm. Peppers, not as, I don't usually don't. I do it with tomatillos. Okay. Um, but it's really uh, plants that'll like vine and trail along the ground, stuff that needs to be trellised. Claudia, do you want to do one up higher so you don't have to have your knees on the ground? Yeah, we you have a little table over there, too. <laughs> yeah, we can we bring that, that table? little table over there. Let's have a table. No, this is okay. This little table is going to be even better, I think. Oh, yeah, this is so, look how classy this is. Oh, there <laughs> you so go. Gross. sad ones need a new home. Um, yeah, and planting, these will need to be transplanted again into either a great big pot or into the ground. Um, but it's a great way to save space if you don't have a lot. A lot of tomatoes will thrive in a pot, provided you trellis them. And then our next workshop will be doing the topsy-turvy tomato worms. Ooh. So, so out of control botanist. No. <laughs> no? <laughs> We're all here to share. Yeah. Um, and then whenever you plant something, you want to water it in so the roots have a lot of good contact with the soil. And this soil is really dry. Um, and one of the funny things about super dry soil is it tends to be hydrophobic, which means that it repels water. Mm -hmm. So I like to give it a little sprinkle just to wet it down. And then once it's wet, I'll come back and soak it. Go. 
So next workshop, you can check on them and see how they're doing. See if we did a good job or not. And another thing about tomatoes, if, if you have the ability to put them on a drip system, that's really great because tomatoes are, so I'm sure you guys know because you've gardened, they're very cranky. Um, and they like to get all sorts of blights and diseases and fungi. Um, and it's really, they do better if you don't get their leaves and fruit wet. Correct. So drip is the way to go if you can. Or in a big pot, just water. Make sure you water just the base. I don't think everything else is going to go right in the ground. Are you oh. going to put these in the greenhouse overnight? Mm-hmm. I definitely would. Yeah. I'm just asking. Yeah. Yeah. Why wouldn't we want to leave them out? Because it's going to be cold. It's going to be cold. get too wet, mm -hmm. and then they'll get soggy roots. Yep. And then they'll be unhappy with us. Yeah, especially because we just transplanted them. Right. Because they're going to, they're already like, ah. So I just meant, do you want us to? Oh, we could do that at the end of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another good thing just in general with transplanting is it can be really helpful to add a phosphorus based fertilizer if you have one. Um, not 100% necessary if you have good healthy soil, but phosphorus really helps with root development, which is what a transplant needs um, to establish itself. Uh, so that's bone marrow or not, uh, bone meal. Um, Guano usually are high in phosphorus, so you can like shake a little bit up and mix it into the hole that you're going to plant it in. That can be really helpful. We have some uh, fat guano that we mixed up. We did nice. like a liquid one, so Ooh. had that too. How'd that smell? <laughs> it wasn't too bad. It was a little grainy. <laughs> mm. um, I did some crab meal this year. Where we planted asparagus, and the whole the whole van I took it in smelled like a like the bad ocean <laughs> but it's really helpful and it's natural stuff it's usually a byproduct which is nice um, it's just saving something from the landfill but phosphorus is the way to go and tomatoes of course can be super tricky um, you want to make sure that you don't add too much fertilizer to them because if they get too high in nitrogen um, they'll focus on producing leaves exactly and then they won't produce as much fruit so you want to you want to encourage them to make fruit for us because the leaves don't do us much good um, egg shells, dried up egg shells that you blend up mm -hmm. to prevent the blossom end. Yeah, that's great. So, Sean, have you seen blossom end rot before? Uh, I've seen it. Yeah, and it stinks. And it having ruins the tomato. It does. It's really a bummer because you like you have the tomato and it's so close, and then the butt rots. Um, but yeah, calcium, having enough calcium can really help prevent it. And another thing that causes blossom end rot is really irregular watering. Um, so if you just keep it, try and keep it steady. But yeah, that's a great, and there's so many household waste items that you can use. You know, yeah. And Swish they get it all in. dry and in the crazy line. Mm -hmm. It's brilliant. And calcium, it's good for them. Um, have you guys transplanted onions before? <laughs> yeah, home gardeners don't grow a lot of onions, so let's go give it a shot. It's one of, the, one of the alliums that I have. Oh. I have some, a bunch of onions. Nice. I'll give you this, because I think we have some burlap in the lasagna garden, so it requires a little bit. I was just looking at all those lovely things. Um, so onions usually want to start in a big flat like this, and just um, the way I like to do it is take a pinch of seed and just kind of sprinkle around in a kind of a spiral pattern, and that'll give you pretty good distribution. Um, and these are a good guy to start inside just because they take a while and they like warmer soil to germinate. So why not get ahead of the season because in Montana it's so short. Um, and then when you so want to transplant them. Now is the good time? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you, uh, even you could have done it already if you wanted to. Like They're pretty, or mm -hmm. Yeah, and it really, but one of the things is in Missoula spring is so variable with how warm or cold it is. So. You kind of just have to use your best judgment as to how it's going to be. And Bless it could change it. Bless. Yes. <laughs> just give them good wishes and hopefully they'll succeed for us. Um, so I'm just going to stick my finger under here. Try and gently separate a chunk. So you really want to maintain as much root integrity as we can. 
Um, and then onions, you can do up to four. Delicious. I like to do them in clumps of three. Just kind of gently tease them apart. And then planting them in clumps lets them not take up quite as much room in your garden. Um, and so if we plant them like this, one will bulb this way, another will bulb that way, another will bulb that way, so we'll have enough space. Um, I wouldn't want to go more than four. And onions are, they're another one that you have to think about if you want them in your home garden or not because they're kind of a long season and they're like pretty cheap to buy at the store. That's another thing I like to think of is how readily available and expensive are things. So that's something like, I'm gonna grow my own peppers and asparagus and like stuff that's really expensive and can be hard to find. But if you find an onion that you love, just do it, why not? Because homegrown onions are really delicious. Um, they're fresh. They're just incredible, out of this world. And they're really fun to harvest. I pretty much plant exclusively things that I can't get either in the variety or quality that I want to get. Yeah, I think that's a really good way to approach it. Would you like the tool to demonstrate? Yes. Like tomatoes, I, I have yet to find a tomato in stores that is as good as the tomatoes I've grown. Oh yeah, I bet. Even at the farmer's market? I haven't actually... actually... Yeah, so here's a strawberry we can save. Yeah. There's another one. I haven't actually gotten onions at or, uh, made at the farmer's market. Oh, you should do it. I should. Ooh, this? This looks like bindweed. Do you guys know what bindweed is? Um, this is bad news. So this is a, I think that's what it is. It's hard to tell sometimes before it flowers. Um, yep. But it sends really deep roots and they grow rhizominously. So if you break it up, it just comes up in other places. Um, they produce lovely looking morning glory flowers. They're really nice, but they will take over your whole existence. So it's good to just keep picking them. Smother them if you can, so the lasagna method is good for bindweed if you put like the cardboard and burlap over them and it just keeps them from coming up and then eventually the roots will die. But it takes a long time and they stink. They're the enemy. Uh, but here's some more strawberry. Yes. We could even transplant that if yeah. we wanted to. Bindweed the heck out of here. Um, Another consideration when making your own raised beds is accessibility because mm -hmm. uh, you really want to make sure that you can reach everywhere because you don't want to be stomping on the, on the bed as you're walking around because that compacts your soil. But this is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to dig a little hole and plunk them down. So that's got the burlap also? This does not. Do you ladies know why this doesn't? I think what that decision was? it was either we ran out of supplies or we were trying two different things. Fair. Both totally legitimate options. And where do you find said burlaps? I don't know where they got it. We had some, the instructor who led that one works at a coffee shop. So ah. I'm kind of curious if she maybe got it there. Yeah. So let's do one more to see. So she does have nice, long, healthy roots. And I would plant them like a foot to a foot and a half apart just so they have plenty of space. And especially when you're gardening in a small space, it can be really tempting to plant things super close together because um, you want to try and like maximize. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't dream of it. Um, but it'll make you really susceptible to disease and your yields will be down because stuff doesn't have enough room to grow. So it ultimately isn't in your favor, but I, I understand the temptation. Um, would you all like to try? Let's plant some onions. Cool. And on the map, we have them just in a line kind of this way. So we can make probably two rows of them. Mm -hmm. And then they can go pretty much, I think we have peas pretty much all the way to this Excuse coast. me. So okay. pretty much all the way to here. Nice. Mm -hmm. Lottie, there's another uh, trowel if you'd like to go for it. Oh. It's um, so we have a couple of good examples here. We have lamb's quarters, which are nice and fuzzy, also tasty, superfood, mallow, which has the lobe leaves. Okay, so those, that's, I, I've been wondering about that. There's a bunch of that that grows right up against my house. Mm -mm, let's get out of there. 
Um, and mallow can be pretty tough to get rid of if you let it get big because it forms a big fat root and it's just really hard to pull out. And it spreads so fast. I throw fast everywhere. But yeah, you want like, some snacks? It is nutritional. I didn't know you could eat mallow. How do you eat it? Well, you can dry it and make capsules, or you can make tea. Yes, it's very mucilaginous, and if you've got an upset tummy, oh, it coats it. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Do we have a container to wash these? Please. Oh. Weed container? I don't. Or just pass? I'm just do I? I think. <laughs> I think that will work for now. So okay. okay. Bam. Gonna... It'll dry out. Um, and another thing about weeding is that right now might not be the best time to weed for us because it's going to rain all day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And say we were to, if I were to pick this clover and leave it there, it could very well reroot because it'll be so wet tomorrow. Um, but throwing it on the path is fine. So weeding can be temperamental because you also, I wouldn't want to weed on Friday either because the ground will have just been saturated and it can be pretty damaging to your soil if you're out in there breaking it up, breaking it up and playing around in it with it when it's really wet. Let's plant some more onions. Lottie, do you want to give it a shot? Yeah, sure. You don't have to. Well, I haven't done it, so that's what's important. Let's do it. I never had a big enough area to have onions. Mm-hmm. And onions can be they can suffer from a lot of weed pressure because they don't really have the ability to shade anything out. So we're um, talking about over to here? Yeah. Or I think over to this this pole right here. We can oh, do the whole okay. space. Um, so onions can be kind of high maintenance. And you know they're ready to harvest when the green part falls over. They'll just be floppy on the ground or just flopping over. Do you pull away the dirt to let the onion grow bigger when you do it? I was just reading about that this weekend. Oh, I never have. Like pull away the top of the dirt and then it can grow. Let it grow bigger. upwards? Yeah. I've never heard of that technique. Oh. Let's do, I would do some with it yeah. and some without. It says once it started developing, mm -hmm. and then you can like, mm. I don't know. I've only ever f done onions on like an organic farm scale. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been like an acre of onions. Wow. And that's yeah. just not like, sure. they're not gonna go through and like, yeah. Yeah. like pull away some dirt. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> at the home garden scale, it could totally, totally yeah. work. I think I'm gonna try it on mine just because it did say it's like, it helps them grow bigger. Yeah. What Nothing like better this? than a big fat onion. Here's a clump to do on it. I tried a nibble of this and it wasn't as bitter as I thought it would be. It was yeah. pretty good. Yeah. I haven't tried any yet. I was like, oh no. Go for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that can be the thing with volunteer, mm -hmm. is they just sometimes aren't as tasty. Shouldn't they be more tasty now before it gets hot? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I had some that somehow made it through the winter. They got the just the snow like insulated it. Mm -hmm. And I was all excited when I saw them this spring. I was like, oh yum. And I tried it and it was terrible. It was just like old, old lettuce. <laughs> But yeah, this is like, this is the time before it gets too hot. You wanna do another row? Nice. Plant the tomatoes. They are gonna go um, on the end there. Let's finish up our row. And are you gonna support them in a specific way? That's a good question. I don't know if they're indeterminate or determinate. Um, but I know we have some tomato cages lying around, but yeah. I don't really know what the plan is. Yeah, there's all sorts of, a lot of, I'm sure you know that there's a ton of different ways to trellis oh, yeah. and train and I'm just curious yeah. what you can do. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, and then a couple, coming. we'll do a couple top of curvy ones, so mm -hmm. yeah. Um, at my place we're going to do, we have some cage trellises and we, uh, we're also going to hang string and clip and wind around, <laughs> um, probably with two liters. Mm -hmm. So it's like not too bushy, but not too tall. Um, and you pinch the axles? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And then we have some uh, determinants that we're just going to do stakes and we're going to wind some rope in between and just kind of like have the branches. Yep. And just have them hang out. Dance around. Mm -hmm. And just kind of work with them and bunches? place them as they grow. Now that 
that these are kind of pulled up, what should we? Um, we can water them back in, okay. and they'll be okay if you have somewhere else to put them. For a couple days at least. I thought it was going to be cold. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's coming. Well, we're in the midst of an incredible project. When we bought the house, it had the swimming pool, and it was supposed to be fiberglass. Uh huh. It was cement wallboard put together with duct tape. The pool? The pool. Was held together with duct tape? Yes. That's exciting. It was. <laughs> Above ground or underground? It's in, in the ground. In the ground, it's, still duct tape. There's a building about it. Oh. And so today, you know, we've done all this emptying and taking all that stuff off and jackhammering. So today Fun. we got our rock. So I'm going to start a garden in there for the winter time. Love it. Cold crops. Yeah. I have to solve the light problem, which every step is a new learning. You know, if you have that hole, you're halfway to like an earth pit greenhouse if you wanted to. Yeah. That would be just amazing. Have a roof. Mm. And so trying to figure out how to get the light over it. Right. Which is important. Mm. An elaborate system of mirrors, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought about those solar tubes. I oh, yeah, those. those are awesome. Yeah. My brother's concerned about uh, the integrity of the roof. Yeah, you don't just want to go punching holes in it, especially with how much snow we can get. Especially with the, the amount of lies that we were sold. Yeah. At a very high price. Yeah, um, what do we do when we're done transplanting something? Water. Water, water it, let's water him! Mm. Yeah, and it, that's a great question because it's totally different for different plants. But for these guys, I just do enough to make sure that to where their roots are, it's nice and wet. Especially because they're going to get rained on all day tomorrow. But just so they don't... And we have a drip set up right now, so... When is it? When do you run it? Okay, is I it on a timer? I set it up right before she left, yeah. And so mm. Right now it's too much. So uh, we're still, like, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely something you have to play with. Yeah, and as the season like, changes... <laughs> oh, it flooded out. Flooded out. Yeah. yeah. Fabulous. All right, let me get some seeds. I'm a oh, yeah. overwater. It's tempting. Very excellent I'm, at that. <laughs> I am always worried about being overwater, so I'm a masterful underwater. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, pepper, I, and, but it depends on like what the conditions they're in too. Like, are they outside? Is it evaporating a lot? Are they in a greenhouse? Like, they're, they're in a room in my house. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. I would just do it like I just put my finger in and like if the top inch or so is to really dry I water them but if like you stick it in and it feels pretty moist down there it's probably okay uh, so let's talk about transplanting versus direct seeding and I bet there's some differences from here in California yes. what you want to I'm sure that you can get away with so much more direct seeded I couldn't because it's so hot oh they would get so unhappy I was, and bolt. Uh, yes, I'd get them going and harden them off and then get them trimmed. Some beans, some beans, just yeah. But they gotta be really tough because it's really heat tolerant. Yeah. Um, so I moved to the cold. And here we are, and we start so much inside. Um, so there are a lot of things, especially here in Montana, because it takes so long for it to warm up that we want to start inside before it's warm enough to plant outside. Uh, really cold sensitive plants like tomatoes and peppers for sure, eggplant for sure, um, squashes are pretty cold sensitive and like winter squash can take a long time to grow so you definitely need to start that inside um, probably like April. Um, you can start lettuce inside to get a jump on the season to be able to plant it out sooner than you would because um, a lot of things won't germinate if the soil is too cold so you'd have to wait for the soil to warm up. Uh, and a lot of the brassicas we also start inside um, just to usually they would they're pretty cold tolerant so they would germinate eventually but it just gets you a, a harvest a lot sooner um, do you guys know what brassicas are yeah okay um, they're a beautiful diverse delicious they're so good um, so like kale at this point you could plant it outside and it would probably germinate and grow but because, say, I started my kale in March, and now I have kale plants outside that are this big, 
And it's just a way, because our season's so short, to get ahead of it. Um, but there's still things we direct seed. Most root crops direct seed. Peas and beans we direct seed. Um, there's some things that just are really unhappy about transplanting. I've never transplanted a pea myself. Um, and we're gonna... Oh, for sure. Did they? Yeah, they can get... You have to be really gentle and like baby them. That's something that would benefit from phosphorus. And also um, silica can be really helpful. That's cucumbers and squash or cucurbits. They're in the same family. Um, and putting some silica in the soil, you can spot it, buy it at a garden like store. Mm -hmm. Silica, or that's sil isn't that silicon and silica? I think they're okay. different. I just meant the green sand is a silica, but it has other nutrition in it. So oh yeah, you can just do the regular rigorous. too, mm -hmm. okay. and that'll help. Um, but you can find it at a garden store and it's just a key part of cell walls. You know, it'll help them take it up and just hopefully not be as transplant shocked. Yeah. I did it and it was funny because I had planted them out and then like, you know, they all grew in one place and so I had to like and the ones over here didn't grow, so I transplanted them. <laughs> oh, another thing can be is there's like a window where you want to transplant and if something is too big it can make it more more of a shock for it. Yeah. So they if they, they weren't huge. No, dang. I mean I was like Wherever that squash is, it was not any bigger than oh, that. Oh, that squash was it? Oh, yeah. huh. Yeah, it was weird. I don't know. <laughs> I did not like that. Mm. It might have been too hot, too, is kind of what I was thinking. Because yeah. like last June when it was super hot. It was. I, it was like, it was in the 90s, yeah. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was incredible. Yeah, I hopefully it didn't actually go in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you do have to transplant on a hot day, it's best to like do it in the evening or the early morning. Because like, if you transplant and it's hot, they'll just, they'll just poop out totally. And they should recover, but it's way harder on the plant. Yeah. Um, but we're gonna do something kind of fun today. We're gonna plant carrots and radishes together. Um, and we're gonna do that, we're gonna look at the seed. So carrots, you plant them, direct seed, and then you have to thin them, right? Um, and planting carrots or parsnips together with uh, radishes is a way to get around that, at least somewhat. Because having the two seeds together, they wanna be planted at about the same depth and having the radish seed, oh, these are nice and pelleted, which makes it easier. Um, having the radish seed breaks up the oh, carrot seed. Um, that's something hybrids are something we can talk about, pros and cons. Um, so this will, we don't have that many radish seeds. It would be better if we had a couple more. Um, but it just breaks up the amount of carrots. And then the radishes, radishes are really quick. They're a quick yes. crop and they will be ready way before the carrots are. So you can pick them and then they kind of automatically do some thinning for you, which is pretty neat. The only caveat is you have to be really careful because as you're ripping out the radish, you could disturb the carrot root and you want to leave that alone. So you just have to be really ginger about it. But we're going to try that this year and see how it goes. Um, so let's see on the map. Do you have any questions about that? Yeah, I, it's just like I was going to do both uh, radishes and rooted parsley. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, you could give that a shot. Um, it can be it can be hard. I just I did some parsley this year. I just seeded a ton of it. Yeah, and just I have a couple. <laughs> this is yeah, this is a little bit more like parsnip like just because it doesn't throw up a lot in the way of greens. But do you eat the root? Yeah, oh. I mean it's it's related. Yeah. So. But yeah. it's a parsley you grow for the root? Mm -hmm. Huh. Neat. I love parsley. Every day. All right, where are these going to go? Oh, these are going to go. Ladybugs. Love ladybugs. Why are ladybugs good? Aphids. Aphids. They're a great beneficial predator insect. Um, so we can plant these guys probably in two lines. We can keep our volunteer spinach if we want. So, one of, oops, one of the big problems people run into when direct seeding is they can seed too deeply, um, and that makes it so just the seed has to really struggle, the little germinate, to get to the top. So it's always, it's generally better to cover it less than you think you have to. Um, 
but you want to make sure that it's not exposed to sunlight because some seeds won't germinate at all if they if there's sunlight on them which evolutionarily makes sense so we're just going to clear out excuse my hand make a little space for them and then you can use either your fingers or a tool just create make a little furrow Barrow? Anybody? You could do both. We need, that one needs to keep going. Look at the map again. See how far. Um, you know, that looks pretty good. Another Sorry. one behind? Let's do another one. Are you okay sacrificing a lettuce? Okay, we can do another one in front, and we're gonna do a beet radish count or um, yeah, get it, Lottie. <laughs> we're gonna do a radish carrot combo and some beets. Yeah, delicious. Lottie, do you wanna do some seeding? Yeah, I like to do it with bare hands. They are, they look really cute. Do you usually do heirlooms? Are you not an F1 lady? Uh, I'm moving more into heirlooms mm -hmm. so that I can collect seed. Yeah, that's really and, nice. And I'm not experienced at it because I've done a lot of F1s before. You can even do thicker, yeah. We just had some volunteers that decided they wanted to be in the world. That's okay. They're branching out. I appreciate that. I'll grab those beets for you, Sean. Where put my beets? Oh. Did you cover them already? Let me see. Ooh, that's a nice big chunk. Yeah, just give them a little dust on top, and it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just don't want to be a total seed hog here. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody? Yeah, just a nice thin layer. You just want them covered. Um, do one more row of beets back here. No. Would it be advisable then to take that hay and just a light covering? Um, not yet. Okay. You could after they've germinated. Okay. And like, maybe like once they're this big. Um, but I'd be worried about smothering them. Sean, you want to do one more row between those strips? Um, and carrots, carrots can make a lot of gardeners nervous because they can take up to three weeks to germinate. Um, so you really just need to be patient and wait for them. Okay. So we're growing in a small space. Let's do two different kinds of beets, because why not? I love golden beets myself. Red beets are good too. Um, but... Mm, it's good. Go to woman. So I'll give you some goldens. Give you some reds, okay. and we can just split the row half and half. But we're not gonna mix them up. Okay. or you can mix them up. That works too. Or actually, these have slightly different. Uh, what word am I looking for? They'll be ready in in different right. times. The the red's a little faster. Okay. Yeah. So about right there. Yeah. As you be, as you garden more, you'll become more heartless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> mm, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, so Lottie brought brought up a great point about the F1 hybrids versus uh, open pollinated or non hybrid or even heirloom varieties. Um, so F1 hybrids tend to be more vigorous and easier to grow. 
uh, but they are generally sell or they're sterile, so you usually can't collect seed because it's a hybrid. Um, so pros and cons with that, you have to buy seed every year. Whereas heirlooms can be more cranky um, and harder harder to grow, more special needs, but they're less also production. less production. Um, but they also can be more highly adapted to your local environment, so you can find local heirlooms, and that can really help. Um, and they also allow you to save for seed. So depends. Sometimes for super beginners, I recommend the F1s just because it makes your life easier. But as you get more advanced and like want to get more complicated, um, Triple Divide is a great local seed company. Lots of local ad locally adapted varieties. That's a great way to start. Is it posted in Hamilton? It's quite good. Homestead for farm. seeds, Homestead Organics. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've never visited their they farm. Give us a lot of seeds. Nice. <laughs> Um, but I have no experience with it yet. Mm, I'm sure it'll be great. But yeah, Homestead Saves, uh, Deluge Farm, Good Egg Farm, there's a lot of, it's a big co-op, it's pretty cool. But I'll have to come to the seed library and rummage. Oh, Did we cover them up? Um, and so generally I'll water them. We can. We can also not because they take a long time to germinate. It's going to rain tomorrow, but it would also be helpful to give them to wet them down a little bit to kind of set the soil because if it happens to pour first thing, that could be. Yeah, that could go so you can really go either way. It's going to be an individual judgment call, and how lazy you feel and how far away the watering can is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not far, guys. So. Um, but today I planted a bunch of carrots in our garden and I didn't water them in because it's going to rain tomorrow and they wouldn't germinate and die in that time. So it really depends, but like 95% of the time you're going to want to water stuff in. Um, let's see what else we got on our list to do. We could do some tomatillos too. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Let's do some tomatillos. They, they look sad. Yeah. <laughs> The tomatillos? Oh, it's definitely a, from right. starts. Yeah. yeah, because they take too long and they're so frost sensitive. But they actually, once the summer gets going, they grow really well here. If you keep them warm enough. Excellent. Um, if they make it like first the, through their first cold nights, they'll just like go crazy. I had so much green salsa last year, it was amazing. I used to have, you know, one by four trays that I started everything in and then mm -hmm. transplant, but when you move, you have to make decisions. You can't bring they all the plastic trees. Yeah. It's it's hard. So I don't have a greenhouse and I'm trying to use a fluorescent light and mm -hmm. put the plants in this place as I do. Yeah. Yeah, I would recommend like a seed mat and do you ever do the channel flats or the seventy two tray? I haven't done that one yet. But I Which one? The, the channels. That is really great for nightshades especially because they want to be so warm and it just like is an awesome surface area to volume ratio and you have to transplant from there into a bigger pot and then maybe again so it's a little more labor intensive but those are like a channel flat and a heat okay. mat will do really well for you here. Okay, until I have a real green. Yeah. But that on the kitchen counter will be fine. Just to give them the light close because they, yeah. they get so leggy. Leggy, yeah, they get really if unhappy. They get leggy, they get weak. Mm -hmm. If you could put them outside during the day. Oh, man. Classic example. Ready. It looks like we have eggplant or tomatillo. Tomatillo. Really? Mm -hmm. and, oh, boy. And you can see they're flowering already, yeah. which is not so good. We generally, you want to transplant before you, they flower. Because um, that just means that they're getting really stressed and they're like, ah, I gotta reproduce really quick. Oh my gosh. Um, and yeah, like Lottie said, I would trim these off so that they focus their energy on making more roots and more body and not fruiting yet because we don't want them to fruit right now. So, go. Are we gonna put them direct in the ground or in a pot? I think we're gonna do direct in the ground. So we were we repotted the tomatoes because we weren't sure and where we were where they were gonna go, um, and then these guys I'd probably plant them like two feet apart because they're pretty sprawling. Um, this guy oh it's really dry too so these we're gonna water in really well. 
Um, and I'm gonna trim a leaf, and just like the tomato, I'm gonna bury this sucker pretty deep. So where's that, where's that trowel? Right here. Oh, thanks, honey. Now we can each do one, because there's plenty. Um, they're in the back, right? They're behind the beets and stuff. Oh, behind then the beets and stuff. I think the green stuff. beans, maybe, or peppers mm. or something are over here. Oh, you're you right. Can stretch that far, so I'll let you. Let you. <laughs> you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For this, we're probably gonna have to put one foot on the bed. That's that's yeah, okay. Um, are you guys breaking up here? Beautiful. Got it's really. nice to like loosen them up a little bit. Yep. You're all you're all on top of it. You don't need me. <laughs> so I made a pretty. I made a nice deep hole. Give it a little press down. And we're going to water the heck out of this because that root, the roots are really deep in there mm -hmm. and it'll take them a while for them to develop along the stem. Um, so we need to make sure that we water it so that it gets all the way down to the root, which right now is like this deep. Do you sometimes lay them on their side? Yeah, that's another thing you can do. Whoa. Mm. Who wants to get in there after I almost fell down? <laughs> Not me. Knees Not won't be Fair. Um, yeah, that's another thing you can fly it on the ground and have part of it sticking out and it'll develop roots from there too. Um, what you want? That one, you want that? You want the trowel? Sure. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, right. it's it's too late. Late. yeah, because yep. they're going to get really sprawly. Are you a botanist by training or an egg? An egg. Mm -hmm. All right. An egg. <laughs> you like I'm an egg. Mm -hmm. For training. Botanists don't learn these things. Mm. Like, do you want me to hold botanists them? Botanists don't I don't yeah. know, though. Well, I'm a botanist, plant physiologist. Two feet apart? Oh. My grandma taught me to mm. grow. My dad's a plant grow. physiologist. Really? Mm hmm But at like a, well, he's like did enzymes, so he's at a very small level, not a practical one. Now, so, mine was all about ecology and physiology. So awesome. why does the plant grow where it's set? I like that. Let's Let's do, that's so useful. Tomatoes and tomatoes have similarities in pests or nutrients or like should you not these are tougher, like, aren't they? Plant at least, tomatoes, well, like where you had to make tomatoes last year. Like, I would rotate it, yeah. Rotate them. Yeah. Um yeah I do also find mm -hmm. that uh, tomatoes will won't get as many diseases. Mm -hmm. Um so in my garden, it's right by the university, and unfortunately, some people took up the habit of smoking outside of the garden. Mm -hmm. So a bunch of my tomatoes got tobacco mosaic mm -hmm. virus, yeah. oh, which you can get from cigarettes, yeah. which yeah. really was lame, but the tomatillos didn't get it. So yeah, they can be a little hardier. Yeah, I was, I was trying to figure out this year, like, well, can I just put my, like, put the tomatillos where the tomatillos were, or maybe I need to leave them all together. Yeah, it, I'm, you feel like it's not ideal. Yeah, yeah. If you're stuck, it's okay. Yeah. Um, and I was wondering, maybe you ladies can answer this, because in this garden, we have so much intercropping, and so many things are so close together. I was wondering how you do, if you, how you're gonna rotate. Are you just gonna look at the map and like try and plant things in different places? Um, I think so. We're probably too close together for seed saving. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure, because that was kind of the other funny thing, like. I walked through here a few times last summer, but I wasn't like active in the garden. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I remember there were peppers in that thing. And I remember there was like something here. And that was pretty much what we went off of. Cause yeah. we didn't have a map from last year. So we're, oh. like, it was basically whatever people remembered, we tried to avoid, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so yeah. like I said at the beginning, you gotta write it down. <laughs> Record No matter helps. how much you feel like you remember it at the time, you Here won't you next year. Yeah. I've been, I've been mm -hmm. species. Actual different species. Yeah, and like hots will cross with sweets a lot, and you'll get like a something in between, something, a something or other. So that can be really challenging when saving pepper seed. Um, yeah. Same with tomatoes; they like to cross and make a funky hybrid that might not be desirable. So you have to have them pretty far apart in your garden if you're going to save them. That can be a struggle. Yeah. Um, do we want to do? I saw green beans on the list too. You mm -hmm. have plants and green beans, and are they right next door? Yep, along the back too as well. So I only found bush. Does that work for you? Oh, yeah. That's what we have. Do you know which ones you want to do? <laughs> yeah, right? Can not in the next class. They're not going to be ready by then. <laughs> That's amazing. Where did you find out about anticuchos? Uh, I do a lot of reading on 
cooking. Nice. Um, I lived in Peru for a while, and that was the like their beef heart kebabs. That was the go-to like street drunk food. So you go get an antiquute and a cucho skewer. They're delicious. They're really incredible. Um, That's like I because I had a a lot of the, the meat shopping that I do, I go to the good food store and see what they have that's interesting and like one time there was just a big beef heart number. Nice. Like, I'll grab that and I'll figure out what I'm going to do with it when I get home. Look it up and oh, I can do this. That sounds yeah. really tasty. And heart, I mean, it's just another muscle. Mm -hmm. It's not that weird in terms of, it's not like intestines or anything yeah. or pancreas. There's a, brain. there's a Chinese uh, pork kidney dish. I've become very fond of. Oh, okay. Is that going to be a chef? No, I'm yeah. just, you just an enthusiast. Like, like to cook. cook. That's yeah. good. That's pretty much like the entire reason that I garden is so that I can grow the food. ingredients that I might not be able to find. It's a great reason to do it. Um, so we're gonna plant some really pretty bush beans. I think it's multicolor. Ooh, purple. Fun. Purple, yellow, green. Mm -hmm. So they are a dry bean? Um, these guys you can eat however you want. Okay. And also pea flowers are edible. So these you can eat at a lot of different stages. Um, though eating pea flowers isn't the most efficient because if you eat the flower, you won't get a pea. Mm -hmm. right. So it's like what you want to go for. Um, pea flowers or bean flowers or both? Both. Okay. Hmm. Um, bean flowers are generally tastier. But I, I like the beans. Yeah. yeah, those scarlet runner bean flowers, those oh, are really those good are and beautiful. Um, but these guys are bush beans, which means that they won't need to be trellised as much as a pole bean will. Sometimes I like to give them a little support um, mm -hmm. with just a stake and some string, or you can just leave them. Depends on how crazy they get. It's actually the tomato frame is better. Yeah, the cage is great for bush bet bush yeah. beans, you're right. Yeah, way better than it is for determinate tomatoes. Um, so these guys, they're bigger. We're going to dig a little deeper of a trench. Want some beans? And these guys are at the way back, so I'm going to step on the, okay. on the guy again. Oh, is there somebody? Is that somebody? You know, it's probably just a sunflower. Okay. So you want to keep it on sunflowers? Yeah. Maybe it's not going to be in the way. Yeah. Okay. I don't think so. No, we have others down there. Actually, I have a. Uh, so I, I ordered a bunch of seeds from Baker Creek and I sent oh, a nice. packet of, uh, of sunflower seeds. Oh, you got themselves. sunflower seeds? Mm -hmm. I was oh. gonna do some beans around those. Nice, yeah, that'd be great. They gave me purslane for my free packet. I don't want purslane. <laughs> <laughs> Sunflowers. It is, I like the lemoniness. Yeah, well, it, they use it a lot in Mexico, so you like. Oh. Yeah. Um, so these guys we're not going to thin, so we want to be a little more intentional with our planting. There you go. Reading the packet. Usually <laughs> the way to go. I, I read a lot of packets. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and just so you know, it's seven. Oh, okay. So. Perfect. We can, do we do most of the things that you want to do? So we have that squash that could probably go in if yeah. you think it's not going to be too cold. Do you have any remay or anything? I don't know. Whatever is in the greenhouse, we can plug. Sure. Okay, I feel a little nervous because it's going to be so cold tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be like can, high of 50 or something. I think it's doing okay, so okay. it's not as sad as the tables were. Can I ask what you said? I like this yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just doing it. I'd save those seeds. That's tough. Yeah, yeah that's right. true. And um, do you guys eat your chai flowers? Those are really good too. And they're pretty. You them, you? Yeah, you can use them in oof, whatever kind of recipe. They're good on salads. It's like a little oniony, yummy purple thing. Yay! Let's see. So these guys, we're gonna cover these deeper than we did the carrots, just because they're a bigger, a bigger seed, but still not too much. I'm gonna do it by hand. Ugh. Get all up in the bed. Oh my gosh! It's so had this list and then I didn't look at it at all. Perfect. Oh yeah. I want to talk about successions. Yeah. Talk about the lasagna. 
What do you want to know more about the oh, I just wanted to know what you put in these guys to what I need to be gathering. I, you know, I don't have that many leaves, and mm -hmm. I have cardboard. Cardboard would be great. Yeah. Um, for the brown, brown is usually a little harder to get than green because, mm -hmm. like, you're always producing kitchen scraps. But the brown, yeah. um, and you need to have equal mass of both. Okay. Green and brown. Um, so that means generally like a thicker brown than a green. Yeah, because I don't have that much green. But mm -hmm. I'm also going to use. Got a lot? Brown. Oh, good. Um, what about twigs? You know, in permaculture, you use branches and twigs mm -hmm. at the bottom, you know, cardboard and then branches. You could, or even wood chips at the very bottom would be great for holding water um, okay. and Can keep it to temperature. Time? Yeah. Um, so wood chip layers, cardboard layers. The burlap on top is great because it's easy to work with. So you can just kind of like peel it back or futz with it as needed and it's not that heavy. Mm -hmm. um, and then the straw to lay it down. And then for the other layers, like a mix of, they have some of the llama poo, mm -hmm. kitchen scraps, uh, topsoil. And you've got extra llama poo. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the last topic, we've touched on just about everything. I want to just talk about succession planting just really quick because mm -hmm. that's a great way because both of you guys are gardening in small spaces and that's an awesome way to get more bang out of your area. So like starting with something that is cold tolerant and quick like a radish and then after the radishes are done you could like put your summer squash in or your cucumbers. Um, peas and then late carrots is another great rotation that we do here. Um, and then you cover for the winter time. Mm-hmm. And you break it down for the winter time. Or even say like you do your late carrot and they're getting nice and big, you could sow a cover crop, which is really good. Like um, buckwheat or something? Buckwheat is more of a summer. Okay. If I were to sow in the fall, like Johnny sells a fall green manure mix, that's great. Okay. Um, you could also do a classic combo here is winter wheat and hairy vetch both really good because the wind the wheat grows quickly and helps stabilize the soil and then the vetch is a legume and a nitrogen fixer and you can just cut them down in the spring and integrate them into the soil and that's like okay. you're good to go I have a question for you oh sure when the prior people they threw mm -hmm. all this seed out in the beds mm -hmm. and I have dug up a huge a lot of what I've thrown away there's some kind of cucurbit of unknown background if you guys would like any just mm. if you had space to experiment mm -hmm. are you would you like to because remember i told you i can't kill anything yeah right it's i really know, know the feeling emotionally um, it's just tough yeah. even mystery cucurbits i'm impressed <laughs> <laughs> you know i would say we probably could and we'll find a spot okay. for it we have Lots of free little pots we've been <laughs> stashing, so why not? Why not? Okay. That's my opinion. That's my feeling about it. Ah, sure. Okay. Do you guys have any like questions or other things you wanted to talk about before we wrap up? I can't think of anything. I guess I have a question. What what plants are uh, require more sunlight? What plants can be like Good question. a limited amount of light? That is a great question. Um, usually the nightshades want full sun, um, so it's tomatoes and peppers and eggplant, really like heat loving stuff. Um, a lot of carrots want full sun, um, though some of them can be pretty shade tolerant, a popular combo is planting tomatoes and carrots together. Um, things that like shade, a lot of greens, so like all your lettuces, um, your spinach, your arugula, because, and that'll really help them from bolting in the summer too. Mm. Um, so keep them cool and in the shade. And a lot of the brassicas do pretty okay with partial shade. So kale, broccoli, Brussels sprouts I put out in full sun. Um, the more sensitive cabbage. brassicas. Mm, cabbage would probably be okay. I've always planted it in full sun, but because it's more cold tolerant, I think it'd be all right. Mm -hmm. um, How about mustard? Oh yeah, you could put that in the partial, partial shade, probably not full. Um, and like Romanesco and cauliflower are both more sensitive, and I, I would put those in partial shade. Oh, good. I love cauliflower. Yeah. That's a great question. And do we have a long enough season to grow cauliflower? We cabbage? do. You just have to start it inside. That's, that right there is cauliflower. You could, I'm sure you could get a start at the farmer's market. 
I know. We just but I know. I know. I might have some starts too. Oh, back there because we have like a tray for it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, so we can do a little, little trade thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I would start those guys in like early April, probably. Okay. To mid. Yeah. You know, also, I can always buy them too this year. <laughs> I do I understand the first that year. begrudging. <laughs> yes. To buy it, but yeah. Well, there's something about putting that love and that energy, for lack of a better word into your the whole your the whole life of it yes. yeah mm -hmm. I definitely that's appreciate why i'm that. moving more into the heirlooms because then i'm saving their children mm -hmm. you know it's very satisfying and corny yeah. but that's who yeah, and you can pick wonderful. the best ones pick the ones you like best yeah, yeah. That's plant the those, yeah. Mm -hmm. who likes my habitat best mm -hmm. anyway. thanks everyone thank you thank you yeah. Yeah. thanks for coming so we did a lot today on a regular basis or